The past few years have seen the emergence of some of the most incredible One Piece theories that we have ever seen. And as the series gears up for its epic conclusion and 25 years of plot threads which are suddenly converging together, things are only going to be getting even more exciting. Well, what I'm about to reveal to you in this video will change your outlook on every other One Piece theory out there. Because what we have just learnt within the manga has led to the creation of the greatest One Piece theory for at least the last five years. Now, what could this theory be? Well, it's something which completely completely changes our outlook on one of the most shocking scenes in the past few years. It reveals an entirely new unknown strength that the world government has been hiding, and it utterly destroys everything that we think we had known about one of the emperors of the sea. And even more shockingly, the details of this theory have been right in front of our eyes this entire time. This theory didn't come together until we had received some extremely important information from chapter 1083 of One Piece titled The Truth About that day. Now while I won't go into too much detail here as I do have an entire video giving a dedicated review and analysis of this chapter which you can check out, I will give a quick rundown of what had happened leading up to the game changing revelation that I'm going to cover. The chapter picks up with Sabo explaining the outcome of his attack on Mary Jo, stating that they were successful with the three main objectives that they had going into the infiltration. Sabo's actions had kick started uprisings within eight major nations around the world and the revolutionary army's blocking of the Holy Land supply lines is stated to be the army's declaration of war against the world government. Dragon, though, decides to rein the others' expectations in, telling them that our real battle will start when they mobilize, and he is referring to the Holy Knights. Now, Dragon's statement is very interesting. The Holy Knights were first mentioned within chapter 1054 as the ultimate adjudicators of the Holy Land. They are responsible for mediating any disputes between the world nobles. This in itself is not not worthy of too much notice, but what is worthy of discussion is that for the first time we get to see what the Holy Knights look like, at least in silhouette form. Now this singular panel is an absolute game changer, and I think that it gives us the greatest theory that the One Piece community has seen in almost half a decade. So why do we care so much about this panel? Well, if you focus on this middle silhouette of the Holy Knights in particular, you may notice something very interesting and very familiar. While we can only see the silhouette of this mysterious figure, the similar similarities that it shares with another major character that we have been seeing a lot of recently is unbelievable. And who is this major character that apparently has a doppelganger that's located within the heart of Mary Jo? Well, this is none other than the Red Emperor himself, Shanks. I mean, look how similar this silhouette is to the chapter 1055 silhouette of Shanks. Interestingly, Oda was outright asked about this exact thing before in an interview, and the question went something like this. You might have been asked this thousands of times already, but is Shanks two different persons? You know, since Shanks is sometimes drawn without his scar, plus he arrived at the Paramount War on Marineford War so quickly with unbelievable speed despite having just fought Kaido. Oda's immediate response to the question amazingly was completely censored, with only a text telling readers to take their own conclusions from this. And if that wasn't suspicious enough, his following comment just adds more fuel to the fire. As Oda went on to say, but you know quite often I just tend to forget to draw scars. Now, while this could have been just an innocuous comment about Oda missing minor details sometimes when it comes to drawing reoccurring characters, it could also be looked at another way. Because while it is understandable for him to forget to draw, say, Luffy's or Zoro's eye scars, the most defining trait on the other hand of Shanks outside of his missing arm is the scar that was given to him by Blackbeard, which is running through his eye. Now, it seems unlikely that Oda would forget such a significant part of such an important character. When you combine Oda's suspicious comments with the unbelievable revelations that we had received within chapter 1083, many readers have started to come to the very same conclusions. And while I do believe that the main theory emerging is one that has a lot of merit, I've spent the last few days reviewing all of the information that we've been given, both within the manga and through Oda's comments in interviews and SBS comments. And I've managed to find two even more plausible explanations that I have yet to see anyone else mention. Now, what is the theory that I'm discussing in the first place? And why do I think that this theory could cause the entire One Piece fanbase to go into a total meltdown? Well, the theory is that this mysterious Holy Knight with a startling resemblance to Redhead Shanks is none other than the Emperor's very own twin. While rumors like this have been floating around for years now, it was only with the release of One Piece film Red that the potential for Shanks' family to be in 
influential in the story had moved into the mainstream, and the reason for that was the reveal of the Figurland family, the latest celestial dragon family that we have been introduced to within the One Piece story. But the thing that makes this family so special is that everyone's favourite emperor himself has been heavily implied to be a member of them. The circumstances surrounding Shanks' descent from the lofty status of Celestial Dragon to piracy is still unknown, outside of the fact that he was found as an infant by none other than Goldie Roger himself, hidden away in a treasure chest that was located on God Valley shortly after the downfall of Rox de Zhebek. While it may make sense for this mysterious figure to be a member of Shanks' family and one who bears a physical resemblance to Shanks, what is it that makes us go as far as to say that this person is Shanks' twin? Well, the answer to that is that we've already seen them before in the manga. Cast your mind all the way back to chapter 907, the epic chapter that had the reveal of Rox's name, the introduction of the not-so-empty throne, and most importantly the shocking meeting between Redhead Shanks and the Gorose. Except, what if this wasn't Shanks who had actually met them? Now if you look back at the panel with a new perspective, too many things become suspicious. First, and possibly most compellingly, we do not actually see Shanks' scar. Now this may seem obvious, because his scar is on the left hand side of his face, while we only see the right side of his face in the manga panel. But that's exactly the point. Why choose not to show Shanks' trademark scar, unless the character in question has no scar at all? Naturally, that isn't enough to base an entire theory on. So let's look even deeper. There is the unusual choice of clothing, with Shanks wearing a dark hooded cloak far different to his normal attire. Again, this could just be him attempting to maintain a low profile while travelling through the Holy Land, but all of the Holy Knights have been revealed in the latest chapter to also be wearing similar dark hooded cloaks. And then the most damning piece of evidence is this line by the Gorose. They tell the Shanks doppelganger that this is their reverie. Given your standing, you should have nothing to do with politics. Now while this sentence may not seem worth a second glance, when you begin to analyse it, you quickly see how suspect it is. Why would Shanks, as a pirate or even as one of the emperors, have nothing to do with politics? Even without looking too deeply into it, Kaido was the unofficial ruler of a nation who had dealings with the world government. Big Mom was the outright ruler of her own kingdom. All of the Yonko respectively had nations that were declared under their protection and were flying their flags. Doflamingo was the king of Dressrosa, Crocodile was the king of Alabaster, and Boa Hancock is the ruler of Amazon Lily, and the examples go on and on. The point is that we have seen dozens of pirates throughout the series who could have reason to deal in politics. So what is it about Shanks' standing that could possibly cause an issue here? Well, when we look at this through the lens of this person not being Shanks, but actually being a member of the Holy Knights, it suddenly makes sense. Now for us to really piece this together, we need to jump to chapter 1054, the chapter where we first see the Holy Knights being mentioned by none other than the Fleet Admiral himself, Akainu. He says, in the Holy land, the Holy Knights have jurisdiction to mediate disputes. Now this was said in reference to the disagreement between the Celestial Dragons Shalos and Myosgard over the former's attempt to make Princess Shirahoshi his slave. However, if the Holy Knights were tasked with effectively being judges in the Holy Land, it would make sense as to why they would not be allowed to personally engage in politics, as it could lead to accusations of them being biased. Now singularly, each of these points might not mean much, but when you combine them all together, Together, suddenly the credibility behind this theory of Shanks actually having a twin makes a lot of sense. But as I had mentioned earlier, while I did manage to find a good amount of evidence that supports this Shanks twin theory, I also found evidence that pushes us in two other directions. The first of which is that this Holy Knight in particular is not actually related to Shanks, but is in fact his clone. This is the theory that makes the most sense to me outside of the twin theory, for a number of reasons in particular. For one, cloning technology has been pretty well established by now, originally being developed by Mads with Vegapunk as its lead, and we have seen since Vince Smoke Judge make strides in genetic enhancements and develop what is essentially a super soldier clone army. Beyond that though, it has also been revealed during Egghead Island that Strussy the CP0 agent is herself a clone of Miss Buckingham Stussy, a former rocks pirate, mad scientist and self-proclaimed lover of Whitebeard and mother of Edward Weevil. With the technology already existing, the question then would be how did they manage to clone an emperor of the sea, presumably without his knowledge? Well to answer this question we need to only look at the Seraphim. These are cyborgs developed from the blood of the former warlords of the sea, and they are essentially child clones of their counterparts.
counterparts. And if we know that clones can be developed simply from a person's blood, then suddenly it makes a lot of sense as to why they would have been able to clone Shanks. If you remember the details that we had covered about Shanks' origin, then you know that the world government had months following his birth in order to take a sample of the young emperor's blood for whatever reason in the future. The clone theory also aligns with everything that we had mentioned for the twin theory concerning the supposed appearance of Shanks during the reverie. The only detail that differs between the twin theory and the clone theory is the origin of this Shanks doppelganger. The final theory that I have for you will utterly ignore everything about the reverie as is always the case with theories. There is a chance that we may be interpreting things completely wrong here. And if that is what's happening here and it actually was Shanks who had turned up to speak with the Gorosei this entire time, then this final theory that I have will still remain relevant. The final option is that it was not Shanks' twin who had appeared in chapter 1083 or even his clone. It was in fact his father. Admittedly, the bulk of the evidence for this theory is based upon the narrative and it makes sense for Shanks' father to have a physical resemblance to the redhead pirate. And since strength seems to be somewhat genetic in the One Piece world, it is understandable that Shanks' father would be strong enough to be a holy knight. And since Shanks is currently 39 years old and if we assume that he was born when Shanks' father was in his 20s, then the man would be between 59 and 69 years old. This is narrowly outside of what is considered to be your prime years within the One Piece universe. With this massive implication behind Shanks being a member of a Celestial Dragon family, it would only make sense for that relationship to eventually have an impact upon the story. Having his father being a direct antagonist to the good side would be certainly one way to achieve this. Now, of these three theories that I've mentioned, the twin theory, the clone theory, and the Shanks' father theory, I personally lean towards the first two as the ones that I feel are most likely to come true, with the twin theory narrowly edging it in likelihood for me personally. As always, I'm interested to see what all of you think about these theories and which of these, if any, you think is most likely to come true. Definitely continue the discussion in the comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this One Piece theory video, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.